Hello, everybody. I'm Adrian Nixon. I'm the editor of the Mixing Journal. We look into all things graphene and 2D worldwide on a monthly basis. We're currently in volume four of uh, these monthly editions. Today, it's slightly different. We've got Bernard Munsing joining us. Now, Bernard is really interesting because um, as well as sales director for the Six Element Changzhou Materials Technology Company Limited, which is probably the largest producer of graphene in the world at the moment, He's also the chair of the Graphene Reach Registration Consortium, and that's the uh, the side of him that we're going to find out a little bit more. But uh, Bernard, that's a very brief introduction. Could you tell us a little bit more about you? Okay, I'm, uh, uh, as you said already, sales director of uh, the X-Element. Um, I have an education as a chemical engineer with a business administration in parallel to that. I have worked within uh, a REACH regulatory questions since, oh, I have to say, 15 years now. And um, I'm selling graphene since more than four years. It's already four years that I have joined Six Element. It's a fascinating industry, but a lot of work still to do. So um, we'll talk about reach in this interview. Um, could you tell us what reach means uh, for the audience who might not know? So reach is an uh, it's a shortcut for regulation evaluation, authorization of chemicals. And I have to say it was basically meant first for the European Union only. Meanwhile, this philosophy how to handle chemicals has spread around in the world. And a lot of consultants talk about reach Turkey, reach Korea, reach whatever. And everybody who is a little bit more in that theme knows, okay, we talk about registration, evaluation, authorization of chemicals. And most of these regulations, Turkey, Korea, and other, have basically adopted a lot of things which has been done already or has been published and made through in, in Europe. Uh, there is one big exception. That's, of course, the US American market. They have their own. But um, we will see later uh, that you even can use studies done here, there. Oh, fascinating. So we're starting down the, um, the regulations route. And this is about, um, presumably, helping companies prove to customers and the supply chain that uh, they're supplying uh, consistent, reliable, specified graphene, really, so customers know what they're getting at the end of the day. If you talk about, if you talk about the regulation, you have more a look for safety, health and environment aspects. Ah, okay. So basically, you talk about that the graphene product you will have in hand complies with the chemical legislations in the different countries so that you can use it without any restrictions. That's what you're looking for at the end. Yeah. Uh, so that also your customer can fulfill his obligations towards his uh, authorities. So it has, it has only partly to do with a constant or reliable production. We focus really on safety, health and environmental issues with REACH. I understand now. Thank you. So that's why it's important. Um, just thinking about the um, uh, the registration, what, what types of graphene are covered? Because there are there's lots of graphene out there, isn't there? So if you talk about what is covered, um, so I have to make a short remark. Um, the consortium, which consists out of uh, nine, ten members now, has made a decision what kind of substances are at the moment covered by the work. This is graphene, reduced graphene oxide, and graphene oxide. So if you talk about other functionalized graphenes, you need to take a look what kind of functionalization you are doing. And it might be better to join a different consortium because it might be that the functionalization type will determine at a classification level why the graphene, as far as we know at the moment, has no classification requirements. So we have to check and take a look at that too. And of course, now with the nano regulation in Europe, um, we have also to think about the different nano forms we have within the consortium. So, but we try to have it under one umbrella so that we have one registration for these substances I have mentioned already. Right, so when you talk about graphene and graphene oxide, um, then these are the graphene powders rather than CVD graphene, this film. Um, we talk about, uh, so the, the regulation calls for dry material. So we talk about the graphene powders and we talk about, of course, something which is sold than more than one, sorry, one metric ton per year. Yes. If you talk about a CVD um, processed graphene, you can calculate how much square meters you need to cover 
<laughs> to get one ton of material. Yeah, that's a lot. So basically, uh, the retrogistration at the moment is running for the bulk applications in yeah. tires, in coatings, uh, in thermoplastics, or in thermosets. And we're not talking about the electronic stuff. If the electronics at the end will be in a range, then they can basically take the registration and, and use it. Right. That, that, that's nice and clear. So it's the, the graphene powders. Um, you, you talked about um, functionalized graphene. So uh, functionalized graphene, could you give us an example of what that might be and why it's not covered by the regulation, this particular regulation? Uh, it's, not, it's covered by the regulation, but it's not part of the consortium substances. Ah, okay. You need to be. So the consortium has decided that we will cover these um, mentioned uh, substances. And graphene oxide, of course, it is a functionalized graphene in the one way or the other. But we are not talking about amino functionalized materials. We're not talking about uh, any other things you can imagine. This, this is also a question, what kind of workload the consortium can take at the moment. This might change over years, but at the moment, we have to say this is the basic and we need first to work on the basics before we go into very complicated chemical uh, evaluations. Yeah. So when, when we talk about functionalization, this means adding chemical groups onto the surface of the graphene to modify its properties. And for the uh, or or, or the, and the edges, doesn't matter. Or the edges, yes, of course, yes. And that changes the chemical characteristics, which changes the way it behaves, so you have to extend the, the coverage. Yeah. And basically, you have to go through the process again. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we talk about three different substances, which have, will have three different registration dossiers. So the graphene oxide is different from a graphene. Coming back to uh, the, the companies involved rather than the, the chemistry, then um, you mentioned earlier, I think that you said there are about 10 companies involved so far. But how, how At the moment, we have 10, 10 consortium members, members of the consortium. Uh, and then we have two companies who have bought what we call a letter of access so that they can register and get a read access to the dossier, but cannot use any studies for their own purposes. Yes, because there's been a lot of research time, yeah. money gone into yeah. up. Uh, basically, they share the cost, but they cannot use the studies which are in the dossiers, for example, to go to an Australian uh, authority and present these studies. This is not possible. Interesting. So there's a, a lot of work behind all this. Um, You've mentioned 10 companies are involved so far, and we're probably aware of the names of those being the, the big suppliers. Could we actually use reach registration um, compliance uh, as an indicator of a reliable supplier of graphene? Then? If you think about a commitment of a supplier to be long-term in the market, yes. So these companies are so seriously involved. They are seriously looking for business, right? That, that's nice and clear. So... To financial analysts and other people out there trying to sort out who are the really serious players from less so, look at the reach reg, uh, reg, registration for that company. If they have reach registration, it shows that they're serious and in it for the long term. Of course, yeah. Bernard, that is nice and clear. That's been quite an education talking to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay, my pleasure. <laughs>